Well, thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook for Thursday, the 27th of October. And we are talking about um, very warm 850 temperatures um, across the, um, especially across the near continent. So we've got low pressure, of course, to the southwest of the UK, a strong area of high pressure over the continent. And we are pulling our air all the way up from northwestern Africa. These are the 850 temperatures compared to normal. And you can see here, 8 Celsius compared to normal at the 5,000 foot level, extending from the south of Spain all the way up to the north of Germany, southeastern portions of the Netherlands. But we are actually going to see even warmer air aloft getting tracked northwards over the next couple of days here. And actually tomorrow, even Saturday, could see temperatures exceeding the values that we're seeing uh, currently, these are the current temperatures across the European continent. Low 30s back on the board once again across the south of Spain. We're seeing upper 20s to near 30 in the south of France. Uh, low to mid th uh, 20s across the north of France. And even into the British Isles, we're seeing temperatures 20, 21 Celsius. Look, taking a closer look at the... Um, by the way, this is a crazy warmth all the way across... Germany and um, even into Poland, down into the, the southeast of the continent, we're seeing incredibly warm temperatures and uh, you have to go all the way into Russia for uh, something a little bit more seasonal for the time of the year. Um, this is uh, the latest temperatures over the British Isles, as you can see here, and um, we are still talking about temperatures, even though we're knocking the door, well, four o'clock in the afternoon, still, uh, you know, the sun's well up still, and um, there is plenty of warmth to speak about. 17 degrees in Kinloss currently, 16 at Tain, 15 at Altenhara. I think temperatures have pegged back slightly by a degree or so in some parts of the north. Um, You know, 15 degrees at Presswick, 17 degrees at the Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh. Uh, we've got an 18 in County London Derry, as you can see here. and down across the south of England, we're seeing 20s all the way up towards the uh, England Wales border, uh, in and around Greater London, uh, down into Kent, up into parts of, uh, of Suffolk uh, and Norfolk, we're seeing temperatures 19, 20 degrees. But as we play through um, the next few days, what we are going to see is, um, you know, temperatures continuing to increase actually as we see this area of low pressure so twin areas of low pressure associated with one circulation and we're actually seeing some of that 8 celsius compared to normal at 850 reaching all the way to orkney as you can see here right the way up the spine of, of the east coast really of the british isles we're seeing those incredibly warm temperatures uh, aloft here and just the bullseye the core of the heat over Germany and the low countries as you can see here continuing to play through and you can see even during the course of Saturday we've got even the 12 Celsius compared to normal at 850 reaching all the way into the southeast of England so this is what I'm talking about we are actually seeing even warmer air getting lifted north and therefore date records will definitely be challenged as well as the warmest temperatures ever recorded for the end of October. So it's not hype, it's not building things up, it's not necessarily, you know, talking about global warming that's causing this or anything like that. It's just the facts that are on the table. This is what we're dealing with. And, you know, we've had warm uh, spells at the end of October, 2005, for example. Even 2009 was, was warm as well. And we know what followed um, that that particular year. So plenty of warmth compared to normal is is going to last all the way into the early portion of November. We get a little bit of a push uh, towards the first of November. Play through the loop here, but notice here we've still got more intrusions of milder air uh, getting lifted up into the British Isles. We've got this much more west to east driven pattern as we go into the month of November here. The North Atlantic Oscillation is staying firmly neutral. So therefore that would suggest to me a, a pretty 
zonal west east flow. The Arctic Oscillation is positive. It will continue to remain positive uh, through the week of uh, the first week of November here. So there's nothing really suggesting to me that we're going to see anything uh, particularly cold anytime soon. This is, of course, the GFS um, two-minute temperature anomalies for the upcoming five-day period. So the five-day anomaly is incredibly warm across the heart of Europe, including all of the UK and Ireland, as you, as you can see here. So a flood of warmth. And the video, of course, I did back at the back on Sunday um, at the Port of Cannes in France. I talked about this, specifically uh, highlighted the fact that this could be one of the warmest ends to an October on record. It could be one of the warmest Halloweens as well. And that looks as if it's kind of starting to come true. But um, yeah, it's interesting how the pattern is evolving as we went from summer into the, you know the autumn time i made mention about the significant flip around once the pattern changed further north the tropic tropics got going the involvement of the tropics taking the heat out of the uh, tropical region towards the temperate region then buckled the jet we had high latitude blocking as a result of that the nao went negative we had the coolest uh, second half to september since 2012 thanks to gavin partridge for that fact and um you know that flipped the pattern in terms of rainfall distribution we had literally none during the summertime or very little now we've went to a wet september wet october if we go to a wet november that is something worth paying attention i don't necessarily panic about you know with regards to a cold spell during the winter or a cold winter overall i don't worry about these warm uh, periods during particularly the middle and, and latter half of the autumn yeah september warm and dry isn't a, a particularly great omen for a cold winter and we've seen that first time last year but uh, warm and wet we have seen plenty of times cold following that and you know with the the late season tropical uh, involvement within the high latitude pattern can what happens during you know the, the autumn season with the negative NAO during September, for example, can then repeat itself into the early portion of the winter, whether it be the end of November or on, in, on into December. So these are all interesting aspects that we need to consider and look at here. Um, but uh, yeah, so temperatures 20.5 St. James Park yesterday. And uh, this is a tweet here by um, uh, Harry W or um, Hardrada, ha Harry Hardrada. I hope that's the right pronunciation. But the UK national record for the date, and this was yesterday, is 22.8 Celsius uh, set back in 1969. So a little bit of perspective. It isn't off the charts warm. Um, when I make mention of the warmest, uh, into an October on record. I'm talking about the overall UK and the fact that day by day, day after day, we're seeing these uh, warm, mild temperatures here. It's an accumulative effect, not just one given day or one given temperature at one particular place. Uh, and of course, this is the first time uh, that we've seen temperatures of plus 20 at this time of the year since 2006, which is quite interesting. That was, quite, of course, quite a warm summer. Then it was followed by a warm winter. And we also reached um, plus 20 on this date back in 2005 and also 1978. So interesting, uh, some interesting facts by Harry on that one. Of course, this is the setup. This is the reason why we've got, by the way, this very strong area of high pressure over Europe. I, I reckon this is a hangover of the summer drought that we've seen. And that dry soil is leading to stronger than normal pressure over Europe. And of course, with the type of setup that we've got, warm waters over the, the western portion of the North Atlantic, uh, boosting areas of high pressure over the western portion of the Atlantic. So energy coming down over the top of that high, positioned over more towards the west. And the area of high pressure over Europe means that the systems are dropping down and it's bundling the energy. Areas of low pressure are developing to the southwest of the UK. And then, of course, the energy lifts north northeast uh, because of that block over europe here so this is the reason why we're seeing this setup taking place at this moment in time and um 
you know, it's interesting actually, temperatures are, are pretty cold actually over Iceland today. Here's the contrast, as you can see here, between much of Europe and Iceland. The reason, of course, why we've got a cold Iceland is we've got the trough in place here. This is a tweet actually that I put out earlier this morning. A quick and dirty look at the potential scenario that we could see during the month or oh, well, early portions of winter here. So this is a very quick, very basic and rough uh, guesstimate, if you will. So potential for um, a boost in pressure over this warm pool of the North Pacific, which leads to a trough with cooling here to the south of Alaska. Area of high pressure over the western portion of uh, the United States and Canada leads to a trough downwind. Of course, these very warm waters east of Newfoundland could build high pressure over the western Atlantic, and that's what we're seeing at the moment, by the way. Question mark over Greenland. Yeah, because how far north may that high lift? That will be the golden question. We're seeing, of course, a lot of weather here getting bundled to the southwest of the UK. Now, do we cool these waters in this area here and lead to above normal pressure up towards, uh, you know, the North Atlantic Greenland could force uh, troughiness over the southwest of Europe here? So I'm going to hone in on this a lot more, folks. I'm going to try and produce some of these little graphics as well. And talk to you more and more about the ideas that I've got for the upcoming winter season. But with the AO positive, the NAO net uh, neutral, um, yeah, at this moment in time, I would be kind of a little bit reluctant to see what happens in terms of the November outlook as well as cold. I don't really see anything particularly imminent just yet. The Man Julian oscillation as well, by the way, I think there's going to be a terrific focus uh, of, of the, the enhancement of the Man Julian oscillation over the West Pacific. And I do make mention of the fact that, you know, with this extreme temperature profile over the Northwest Pacific versus the La Nina, that of course will enhance whether it be a positive or a negative PDO, um, you know, PNA, we've got the WPO and the Man Julian oscillation. I think the Pacific could be a major driver in terms of what type of pattern we get this winter. So, yeah, lots of interesting things. So keep it right here on my channel, and I'll keep you up to date as best I can. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Please like, please share with your friends and family. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate your viewing and support. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.